What's going on, y'all? It's Patrick here, and uh, it's been a long time since I've recorded a video, but there's a good reason for that. As you can tell, I am in a completely brand new space, albeit temporarily, um, but the location, the general location, is not that temporary. In case you haven't been keeping up with me on social media or anywhere else that I've been talking about this, um, I've moved to Japan. It's a really big deal. Uh, because as you know, this has been my dream for such a long time. And luckily, thanks to uh, Juna, thanks to some other friends I don't really want to mention just because I want to keep their privacy. Um, actually, the people who I'm staying with right now are helping me out with this. Um, but thanks to everyone's help, I've finally been able to move here and it's been really, really cool. Um, I'll, may I'll maybe touch on that uh, another time, another video, because right now is not exactly the update video. I'm talking about something very specific right now. Um, but this is going to be another Real Talk video. Another not as heavily edited video. Right now I have no script. There's nothing in front of me. You can't see it. I'm not looking anywhere else but right here at the camera. And the reason why it's going to be easy for me to talk about this is because I've been having this conversation with a lot of people recently. Um, all my friends, colleagues, uh, students, every, everybody I've been talking about this with. Um, and the main thing I want to talk about is kind of uh, an issue that I see as well as just a general topic that people should think about. Um, but today I want to talk about the differences, similarities, relationships between being an artist versus being a working musician. Now, how many of y'all have actually thought about that before? I'm not sure how many of y'all may have given any thought that there's a difference between those things, especially when we look at famous people, we consider them as artists. Or when we look at people who are making money with music, well, why wouldn't they be a working musician? They're working because they're making money and they also play music. So what's, what gives? What's the difference? Well, have you ever given any thought as to any type of potential differences or similarities between the two as them being separate things entirely? Because the thing about being an artist and a working musician is that they actually, contrary to what you may have been taught or what someone may have told you, uh, they actually require completely different skill sets. Um, and completely different mentalities. They end up kind of intersecting in a Venn diagram. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll put one up on the screen at some point. I'm not sure. You know, give myself a post editor note <laughs> about this. But um, there's at least a Venn diagram, like a part where they intersect in the middle, and things that you can use skills from either being an artist or being a working musician that you can use to help. You know, the other thing that you want to get into. But they are very specific and different skill sets. Um, in different ways of engaging with your craft that I think it's it's kind of a grave disservice. I almost I don't want to say crime, but it's at least a disservice and a, a, a big um, a big bit of dishonesty for people to not teach you the difference um, before they kind of get you into the mindset of going into music as a career. Because if you go to school, for example, if you go to any type of uh, musical institution or maybe an institution that just happens to have a music program. It doesn't matter. Usually there's some type of allure that comes with it, right? You got into the program because you were already online, already in line with wanting to become a musician. You were already on the track, on the path to doing something with your art that would hopefully someday also make you money, right? So if we're in the business of using our art to make money, then we also have to understand that there are some things that come with it um, that are not just the, the 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 nice, attractive, super glistening advertisements that we see when it comes to becoming uh, a glamorous artist or famous musician. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, just like the other Real Talk video. I have no idea. This is just thoughts I'm having on my mind. And of course, as always, if you have any thoughts about this, I really encourage you, even as you're watching the video, go ahead and type in the comments. I really want to hear what you're talking about. Okay, so before I get into what I think about being an artist versus a working musician and why that distinction should matter to you, um, let's go ahead and just Google the definition I have on my phone right here. The definition of an artist, what Oxford Dictionary thinks an artist is. So right now, if you look at the definition, it might actually start disproving some of the stuff that I'm saying, but okay, that's, that's why this is an, an opinion video. But... Right here, if you Google artist, it says, one, a person who creates paintings or drawings as a profession or a hobby. So right now, you can already see that there is something that says profession or hobby. So you again, artist. So artist does mean working musician, right? Well, I really think it depends on the context. And that's why I wanted to talk about this right now. Um, when we go to, let's say, 
jazz school for lack of a better lack of a better word um most of the people watching this video right now are probably either hobby musicians or jazz students that's just the general demographic i can assume i don't have any actual demographics you know youtube doesn't uh youtube doesn't keep track of those specific things but i could i'm willing to guess that if you're watching these types of videos from my channel you're probably trying to learn more about music so let's say that you got into jazz school either you got into a jazz conservatory like juilliard or manhattan school of music anything like that or you got into like a state level university that also has a jazz program attached to it that's cool um the problem that i see with most of these institutions is that they are basically advertising to you that you can come here to these schools or study with this teacher or do this environment to become an artist they're basically saying hey if you want to become a musician we can give you the tools to help you do that um the problem that i have is that <laughs> the thing that you end up learning outside of these schools is something that i think the school should actually teach you and it's the second term that I actually want to make a distinction about, and it's called being a working musician. Or if you really want to say working artist, you can, but I want to specifically separate those two terms for the purpose of this video. So I'm saying artist and working musician. So now that I gave you a definition of what an artist is, um, let me give you my own um, definition of what a working musician is. I think a working musician is somebody who plays music specifically to make money. That's it. There's no other grand explanation to that. It's a musician who straight up their primary purpose is to use music as a profession, as a job, as a career. Now, if you noticed, nowhere in my definition of working musician does it have any requirement to be an artist. Now, that might seem a little weird, but the reason why I'm saying that is because the skills that you need to become a working musician are completely different than what you need to be an artist. So like I told you in the beginning, there's no script for this. So a lot of these are just going to be kind of unorganized thoughts. But at least I hope that you can bear with me and join me on this conversation because this is stuff that I really think is important. So the first thing that I want to talk about with regards to what I think is an issue with education and about that distinction is when you're coming to these schools enticed to become an artist, um, there basically is no emphasis being put on anything except for practicing. You need to practice. You need to learn as much about music as possible. Um, they throw in, you got to learn how to read. Some places, some schools don't place as much emphasis on reading or sight reading, which is okay. Um, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, but there's also an emphasis if you're in the jazz program. So I don't, I'm not going to really talk about the classical program as much because I don't, I didn't go to school for classical music, but at least in the jazz sense, um, you're taught to improvise, you're taught to play maybe in a few different styles, but mostly swinging, mostly bebop, mostly big band type of stuff. Um, you're also being asked to compose a lot of times. You're being asked to arrange. Um, you're also being asked to learn how to rehearse either as a sideman or as a leader. Um, usually good schools will have a lot of these things, a mixture of them with some extra stuff uh, in there as well. Um, also, there's some other aspects of the music education programs that I do like. I like seeing that there's some, uh, for example, at my alma mater, Manhattan School of Music. I'm not sure if this is still a part of the school, but I hope it is. Uh, the Center for Music Entrepreneurship, where they give a lot of different tools and resources to students to help them think about music as more than just the notes. But let's think about it with some career focused stuff. But again, that programs like that are still very artist focused. They're still about what's my brand? Who am I? How can I sell myself? A lot of that, right? So there's a lot of artists, artist focused things. Do, while I'm talking about this, do you, do you see any issue? Do you, do you potentially see any issue in what I'm saying right now? It's okay if you don't, but I can see one glaring issue. The issue is the reality. <laughs> what happens when you step out of these schools and try to work as a musician? Because Again, there is this idea we're being sold that being an artist is a number one priority and it's the number one focus. Everything outside of that is kind of extra or stuff that you have to do in order to become an artist and to achieve this grand goal of becoming an artist. And again, I have a problem with that. My problem with that is that a lot of these programs and a lot of things that we're being taught, not just, I don't want to just fault the music programs specifically because it's not just them, it's everyone, all of anybody our mentors ourselves resources we see on youtube me <laughs> whoever right you know there's this general thing that i've been noticing where a lot of people will go through these institutions um they might either end early uh and leave the school or they get out of the school and now they have to work for uber or they have to get another job like the reality of having to work 
right? To fill your to fulfill your dreams of becoming an artist. And again, there's no problem with having to do that. We all got to do stuff. I started teaching so that I can make more money. Um, everybody has to make money to survive. That's the thing. But what about making money with your music? How do you do that? It's it's actually a kind of a big puzzle that we have to learn how to complete, <laughs> if you think about it. So if there's anything that we can learn from the great Broadway warriors of New York or the stalwarts of the recording scene in L.A. or any place in the world that has a very strong uh, commercial music scene is that you got to work. You have to work to make money, period. You got to work any type of job in order to get paid back for a service that you're giving uh, out to someone or client or whoever, employer, doesn't matter. Basically, if you do a task <laughs> that requires a skill, you get money back for it. That's just how it is. So you have to already, the gear should already be turning in your head why someone would want to pay for your art that serves yourself. Now, again, I don't want to get, I'm not trying to get dark. So don't, <laughs> don't look at me weird when I say this. There's a very big point that I want to make when I'm saying this. Um, but I think it's important at least to start making some distinctions between an artist and working musician going forward. So if we're talking about the main differences between being an artist and a working musician is that the art being an artist largely serves the self, whereas being a working musician mostly serves other people. If you want to be a great and successful artist, and again, success does not just mean making money. Success just means being able to achieve your goal as an artist. Usually you have to spend a lot of time focusing solely and specifically on yourself. That means your own goals, your own craft, your own skill, everything, whatever craft and skill, I guess, can be used interchangeably. But you basically have to focus on what you like and what you're trying to get out of your music. If you don't do that, I don't want to say that you're wasting your time, but you will, you could be doing something else because if you want to be practicing becoming an artist, there's so much practice and introspective searching that goes into becoming an artist. And once again, all of that has nothing to do with other people. That's you serving yourself, which is great. That's one great way to be. Um, I'll talk about the caveats of that a little later, but I just want to talk about the differences in the focus. So if we're talking about a working musician, so what's the focus as a working musician? Why is there a difference? That's because when you are a working musician, you are largely focusing on developing skills that other people desire from you. So it's not just about having your skills being on display, like, oh, wow, that person can really play a lot. It's like, no, what about you makes me as an employer want to call you for my gig? I have to think about that. So if you're focusing on just <laughs> being the best, you know, you can play the highest or you have a lot of two, five, one alterations with this super low Korean, this and kind of thing that again, that's a focus. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you want to just be the most spangling and you want to be the most incredible, fast, slow, you can play ballads really well. That none of that stuff really matters. It doesn't matter specifically what camp you're in about what you like about music. The point is if me as an employer being like a band leader, let me, if you don't like me using certain, you know, official workforce terms, um, if I'm just a band leader and I'm calling you for my gig, what about you is something that I need to make my music come to life because I got contracted by a company to put on music and I need people who can play the music. So that means you're going to have to develop skills to, you got to be able to read music. You got to be able to, if you're a woodwind player, you might have to double because there might be some extra stuff that I require of you. You need to be able to show up on time. You got to be able to respond to emails. You got to be able to, uh, there's so many other things that I could talk about with being a working musician. But the point is, without making the video too long, is that the point and focus of being a working musician is less about yourself and more about developing skills that other people desire of you, which means that you will get called more because you have a general set of skills to uh, get the job done, so to speak. So just in me talking about the differences and the focus, there's something that we should talk about here that you might have already noticed. Being a working musician doesn't require you to be the best. It, it doesn't require that you have a ton of skill at all, really. And this is going to rub some people the wrong way. But how many times have you seen your friends, uh, colleagues, anybody, heroes, post on social media, whatever, uh, man, like this person shouldn't have got this gig. Why, why is that person famous? Why is that such and such? Why did he get the gig? Well, they probably got all the necessary skills it takes to be a working musician because it does not matter how good they are. It matters how much they have that the other person wants. So that is the biggest difference between being an artist and a working musician. And unfortunately, this is the part where we have to start getting into deciding what you want to do, what you want your focus as a musician to be. 
So if you want to go down this line of thinking about what you want to do, how you want to do it, let's look at some of the caveats of both being an artist and a working musician. So the obvious good things about focusing on yourself is that there's a lot more self-improvement. There's a lot more personal fulfillment, not just skill in terms of virtuosity, but your personal virtuosity can be anything. It could be expressing the most beautiful three notes you've ever done. It can be expressing the most beautiful 300 notes. It doesn't matter. It's all about what focuses on you. The caveats with that is that if you spend too much time focusing on yourself and not about what other people want, uh, whether it is the musicians that want you or if it's the audience that wants you. If you're not focusing on that, you're largely going to be dependent on people finding value in what you do, regardless if you, your thing speaks uh, to the general public or not. So you're going to be depending on a lot of grants, a lot of public arts institutions that want to support you know, independent artists, a lot of things like that, which, again, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, there are plenty of people that go down that path. There's so many people that have been successful from doing that as well. Um, it's just a lot more rare um, to do that. And that's, I think this is the idea that a lot of uh, kind of older folks have or, or parents or anything when they think about, I don't want my son to go into music because the first thing they usually think of is, okay, go into music, uh, it's great, it's nice, you can make some nice things, but you can fail because it's such a cutthroat business and like only the 1% of 1% of the 1% uh, artists actually make money and be successful doing something that only serves themselves. So there's a big risk in becoming an artist and that's, that's okay. That's the type of risk you're taking by focusing on yourself, but you have to be honest about that. And that's, that's why that's important to talk about. So as we talked about with being a working musician, there are some obvious benefits to it. Maybe not so obvious, but, uh, Based on what I said, I think they're pretty obvious because if you are the best at doing what people want from you, you're basically always going to work. It doesn't mean that you're the best at playing high, you play fastest or play the most expressive. It just it just means that whatever for your scene, doesn't matter what scene it is. If your scene requires that you need to be like all the musicians in the band require that you play with you play slide guitar and you got to play slide guitar blues. If you can do that, great, you got the gigs. Or if your scene requires that everyone for some reason just loves piccolo and French horn doublers. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just throwing something out there. You gotta you gotta play piccolo and French horn. Anybody who plays piccolo and French horn, the best, you know, they're gonna constantly work. That's great. That means you're gonna, you know, you're gonna make money. You'll be able to have a savings. <laughs> you're gonna be able to, you know, maybe build credit. You can whatever. And and you don't have to work a day job. That's that's great. So there are some maybe not as obvious caveats to this, but I think from my experience, because I've been doing this for 10 to 15 years already of doing both things, artist and working musician, um, there are some kind of heavy caveats to just focusing on being a working musician. Um, the biggest one is that, which should be obvious now that I've explained it, is that you don't really have time to focus on yourself. You're, you're going to have to do a lot of sacrificing to be able to get both together. And it's possible people do it, but um, if you have any interests outside of just music, you're going to have to really think about how you use your time effectively because not everyone can balance those two things very well. So the, to me, what I think are the um, kind of glaring caveats about being a working musician is you have to spend a lot of time making sure you're keeping up your skills that other people desire of you. There's not a lot of room to, hey, like, you know, this scene likes bebop. Well, you know, I really like late train. Well, the scene doesn't like late train. They don't want they're not calling you to play late train. So you got to play late train in your in your off time. That might be the thing that unlocks your true potential. You might just be really good at playing bebop. You might just be really good at playing traditional jazz like Louis Armstrong. You might just be really good at playing second alto or lead alto or third bone, whatever, or the first trumpet. You know, you might be really good at doing those things. And this is kind of a, I'm trying to get, I'm not I'm trying not to get emotional about this because this is very personal for me. This is something I've been going through for years. It's one of the reasons why New York was kind of stressful to me, but I just want to be honest that you don't really have a lot of time to work on those other things. If you're solely focusing on being a working musician, because you're going to be getting gigs and you might be out late. You might be out 9 a.m. rehearsal and you might be out playing until 3 a.m. and you got to do it all over again the next day. I've been there. I've literally done that plenty of times for years. Um, there's not a lot of time to work on yourself if you do that, because if you do, well, then you don't really have time for social life. You don't really have time for uh, family all the time. You really don't have time for a lot of personal pleasures. And you're going to have to really think about that again. 
it is possible for you to balance. I want to make that clear. I don't want to make this a, like a dark discussion about being a working musician versus being an artist. I just wanted to really talk about these things that people don't tell you about. Um, because when you do focus on becoming a working musician, those are the things that are going to be demanded of you is that you keep that up. You have to have an upkeep of those skills. So a lot of people are very happy doing that. I personally have a lot of friends who are totally fine with just the brunch gigs, the the big band gigs here, but they it makes them happy to do that. And, you know, their personal artistic expression for them is through doing those things. That's great. Again, that doesn't always work out for a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people watching this video right now that really got into jazz because they heard Charlie Parker or John Coltrane or Cannonball or Miles or JJ Johnson or whoever, and it made them feel things. It's like, wow. This music is so incredible. It's so powerful. Like, I want to do that. I want to create the same um, deep emotional experiences that I feel. Well, there's a problem with that as soon as you graduate college and go into the real world when you see that the people that are hiring you don't want you to do that. Okay, maybe that was a little too dark. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean that they don't want you to do it, but that it's not always the time for that because you're getting called for a job. If you want to work a job working at a restaurant, right? Like, you're working at a nice, fancy two-star Michelin restaurant or something like that. Three-star Michelin, who cares? And you go to that restaurant and you have to make filet mignon. Okay, well, if you want to make cube steak <laughs> or you want to make a pizza because that's your artistic passion, who cares? It's time to make some filet mignon. Don't make that, what are you doing? Like, and chop the onions up this way. You, you got to do everything a very specific way. And if you want the people to come up to you after the gig, um. <laughs> after the gig if you want the people to come up to you um after you're done uh, uh cooking for them and they're like compliments to the chef or it's yeah, bring it back to music if you're on the gig and you want people and people are going to come up man you must love what you do it's it's amazing that you do what you love for a living <laughs> you know what i mean like you got to do the job you got to do the job you got to do what you were called to do there's no room for artistic expression you got to find those little four bar solos where the band leader is like oh you can kind of play whatever you you know just go and you got to insert that little bit and hope that people notice it. Again, I've been there too. Um, I just think it's important for us to talk about this because um, people never, ever talk about this difference. But okay, let's step away from the darkness for a little bit um, and just get real. <laughs> I've been getting real the whole time, but right now, let's bring it back to why you need to decide which one you want to do. Because you can do both, but I think it's important for you to understand that there has to be a focus at some point of your artistic or musical development. First of all, let me get out of the way um, before people start flaming me for this. I think at every, at every situation, no matter where you're starting from, there is, is a baseline skill level for both things. Whether you're going to be an artist or you're going to be a working musician, whatever. If you're going to play this music that we call jazz, you need to work on your skills. You have to work on your own sound. You have to work on learning harmony. You have to, there's so many things that you're going to have to learn how to work on. Um, even if you're going to be somebody like Ornette Coleman, who invents a completely new system of thinking about music, even he still knew his scales. <laughs> right? Even he still knew how to communicate his musicality. So... Even if he wasn't necessarily doing things that other people deemed acceptable, that doesn't mean he still wasn't able to communicate his artistry. There still needs to be a sense of skill in some way. You have to work on your skill because art is a skill. So regardless if you want to just express yourself with complete randomness or if you want to express yourself with something that's already codified, no matter what, there is a baseline in level of entry that you need to pass in order to play the thing that you want to play. The only thing I'm talking about here is how real you need to be about your current situation, what's real for you, maybe how much money you have, maybe your position, maybe your living situation, school, your current skill level, any of that kind of stuff. I think it's really important for you to assess whether it is more feasible for you to be an artist because you can do that and you can work on that yourself or if you might want to go into being a working musician because that's also enticing for you. For example, if you want to play in a big band because that's like your dream or you love Maynard Ferguson, Count, B Count Basie, uh, Stan Kenton, Duke Ellington, Thad Jones, you know, you love these, you know, Quincy Jones, all the great big bands, right, of all time, of, of our of our history and our current time. If that's what you want to do, then you might 
most likely you might want to step into the field of working on working musician skills because not only will it allow you to get more work, but it also will put you in line with being called by big band leaders who need your skills to generally be able to read music and interpret it with a section together. This is also that involves not just other people as in the audience and the band leader, but also your band musicians around you. So you're going to have to learn how to go outside of yourself in order to achieve the thing that's going to get you those working musician benefits. By the same token, if you're somebody that was purely inspired by John Coltrane's artistic efforts in his later life, um, not necessarily his efforts as a working musician, which again, we can talk about at another time, um, but I want to keep this, it's already, video's already long enough. Um, if you're inspired by those pursuits, if you're inspired by somebody like Ornette Coleman, if you're inspired by somebody like, like Miles and his entire artistic uh, career, <laughs> right? If you're inspired by those types of things, then yeah, you might want to focus on trying to be an artist. But again, there's a caveat to that. I think you can focus on being an artist if you're very real about your personal situation. Um, it doesn't mean that, hey, like I don't have money enough to be an artist. No, I don't, you can, if you're in a situation where you don't have to worry about certain things and you feel very secure about your life and you feel very secure about your financial situation, or if you're young and there's still a lot of things that are being, still a lot of things that are being taken care of for you, uh, then you can focus a lot on being an artist because if you have a lot of natural talent for that, then people will notice you, you know, but again, you have to have that talent. I don't think it's realistic for most people to solely focus on purely artistic pursuits as a jazz musician, unless you already have a job. If you already have a job, something else that makes you money and you're okay with having that make you money while you focus on your specific personal artistic pursuits, go for it. And I think everybody should do that. It's just a reality. And it's it's unfortunate when I see so many of my friends um, and people that I know or just people that I've casually met uh, that I went to school with or I see that they went to a certain school and they're not doing what they set out to do. Or maybe they got discouraged from doing it. And I think it's not necessarily their fault when a school is or any type of institution is kind of persuading and enticing you and advertising that we're going to give you the skills to be a great artist. We're not going to give you the skills to be a working musician. It's funny because I feel like the classical side of it actually has that down a little bit more, but that's a, we can talk about that. There's a lot of reasons why the, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old uh, institution of the classical conservatory has had time to develop their methods. Um, so we're not going to talk about that, but there's a specific culture around that, what makes that work. And there's obviously problems with that as well. But speaking from jazz experience specifically in the jazz school that I went to and the jazz schools that I've given master classes at and the jazz schools that I've visited, um, the fact that we're training and trying to train people to be artists, I think is something that is a little dishonest. And I challenge everybody who's watching this video that either is an educator or head of an educational institution or just teaches lessons to students. I challenge everyone to be extremely real. That's my basic conclusion to this video is that I want everyone to be real and start thinking about how we can prepare our students going into this next generation of jazz. Um, how to think about their careers as an artist versus a working musician. And the reason why this is important, this is actually a topic for another video that we can get into, uh, is because we're at a constant war with the idea is if is jazz popular, is jazz dying, is blah blah blah. Like so many, so many different subtopics that go under this umbrella of the popularity and life expectancy of jazz as a thing. Um, and I think <laughs> one of the issues with that is that there's a lot less opportunities to work as a jazz musician in the way that we have romanticized it and the way that we fantasized and dreamed about it in the modern day. There's not a lot of club dates. There's not a lot of real big band gigs that'll like help you to swing actually like Count Basie did. A lot of the masters are unfortunately leaving us or getting sick or unable to play. So there's not a lot of experience we have with <laughs> connecting with these people anymore. And it's our job to now be as real as possible possible with teaching people this difference um so in order to do that i think it's I, in order to do that i think we just have to talk about it that's it i think we just talk about it and be real about the opportunities that are presented around you or opportunities that you might have to travel to get either way there's a way to do this we just need to make sure that we're real and honest about it and that's that's basically it all right, so like I said, that's basically all I have to say for right now, today. Um, there's so much that can be talked about. This is an endless conversation. I just wanted to start it because I never see anyone talking about it. And so that's why I wanted to posit this into the air and let people open up the conversation. 
Have a conversation with your students if you're a teacher. If you are a student, ask your teacher. Please, please ask the teacher, ask all your teachers, educators, what the what they think the difference is between an artist and a working musician and how you can prepare yourself for either one of those skills because it's an extremely real thing. It's a little more real for people who live in places like New York and L.A. because those scenes actually demand that and there's a lot of high-level music in those scenes that can make you money on either circuit. Um, but yeah, I want you to also ask yourself, what do you want to be? Do you want to be an artist or do you want to be a working musician? Or do you want to do both? Either way, it's possible. It just either one of those things takes a combination of a lot of skills and risks that you have to take in order to get to the level that you are trying to achieve. So what do you think? Go ahead and comment below what you think about the difference between an artist and a working musician is. Tell me what you think you want to be. Tell me what you think you already are. Or tell me if you think I'm wrong. Either way, I'm always open to that and I want you all to talk as much as possible. So please drop your comments in the comment section below. I'm always reading as much as I possibly can, especially when I put these videos out because it helps me to make new videos for the channel. And I know I said this video wasn't going to be that heavily edited, but you know, there's a lot of stuff in here and a lot of stuff that needed to be said and digested a little easier. But if you have any more questions, you want to keep in contact with me more about topics like this, you can follow me on social media like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any of those types of places and join the discord to be a part of the conversation. We are quite literally talking about this stuff in real time every day. It's a great place to be. I also play video games there too sometimes. So just be wary of that. But yeah, those are the best ways to keep in contact with me. All right, y'all, that's it. Um, I got a lot of ideas in my head, and a lot of those ideas will be put out very soon. It might be in a different place than this because I have a lot of moving around to do. But either way, just stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button. Like the video. It really helps a lot for the channel, especially since I'm here in a new place. And, yeah, I look forward to hearing from y'all soon. Stay practicing. And, uh, yeah, just enjoy your life. Enjoy music. I'll see y'all in the next video.